It's a my 19th position and I've had a lot of people laugh at me for this, but I just think it's going to happen at last, it's Everton. I think Man United will have a real good season. They've got So there we have it. We have reached the end of the 2023-2024 Premier League season. Congratulations to Manchester City. Yeah. That's four titles now on At the trot. Scene. Arsenal finishing runners-up again. Yeah. And commiserations to the bottom three clubs who came up last season. Sheffield United, Burnley and unlucky in so the cool. end, Luton Town. So this is our reaction to our predictions from the start of the season back when we made them in August. Remember, our point system is five points for an exact placement in the table, three points if we're one place out, and one point if we're two places out. Any other positions at zero points. And we're also scoring with the Spencer FC model, which Nathan is. So basically, if you're one position out, that's going to be a point, isn't it? Cough, cough, Irish guy getting 156 in his championship predictions this season. That's right. Absolutely and if you're, shocking. And if you're 10 positions out, that's 10 yep. points. So the lower score for that one, the better. So Nathan, if you'd like to kick things off with our relegation predictions. Yeah so, yeah, so moving on to my relegation predictions, I actually had two out of three this season, which is very good. So scooping up 10 points right off the bat there. Sheffield United finishing bottom. They actually won up my prediction. I thought they were going to have a shocking season, losing and die. And that squad was just not nowhere near good enough for the Premier League. Heckenbottom gets sacked. They bring in Chris Wilder again, which I was really shocked about considering the way he exited the club. But conceding 104 goals of Premier League records, that's absolutely shocking. And they got to be up there with one of the worst Premier League sides of all time. Moving on, in 19th, I had Everton four positions out. Of course, they stayed up. This was because I thought they were going to get points deductions and have a poor season in general. And it's been coming for a few years. But Sean Dyche gave them a really strong end to the season. They did have 10 points deducted in the end. But at the end of the day, very, very good season, you could say, considering the circumstances. And then Luton Town finishing in 18th. I thought they might not just have enough quality considering the teams that are around them, but they gave it a really good go throughout the season and very well could have stayed up if Forrest got a bigger points deduction. But yeah, fair play to them. Actually, It's actually eight points for Everton, not 10. So fair play to what Luton did this season. They attacked really well, got some great players in like Ross Barkley, proven at this level just not enough unfortunately so they'll be probably dangerous in the championship next year so my bottom of the table Nathan exactly the same yeah. as you 20th position Sheffield United finished absolutely terribly Awful. seven defeats on the bounce at the the business end of the season one of the worst Premier League sides of all time you could say and they only chalked up three wins all season and two of those were at home so one away win absolutely terrible by the Blades Next I had Wolves. This was a bit of a shocker, even though they did tail off at the end of the season. They actually finished in 14th position. I was five positions out there, so not great from my perspective. And then Luton Town, bang on the money with them as well. As you said, Rob Edwards kind of turning things around a bit, but they just didn't have the quality at the end. And they're going to be back down in the championship for next season again. And if you look at the bottom three clubs, Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United, they recorded just one win between them mm -hmm. in their last six matches, which which isn't great for them, is it, no. when it's next season? And I can't even remember the last time that a club stayed up on 32 points in Nottingham Forest. Goes to show how poor they were all season, though, don't it? Exactly. So at the end of this little section, Nathan, we're both on 10 points. I'm looking at the Spencer FC models. You're on four, I'm on five. Moving on to our 17th to 13th positions. I had Everton in this one, just the two positions off. We all know about their points deduction, so I do get a point there. Then I had Bournemouth. Now, Bournemouth, it was sort of from like halfway through the season, they seemed to pick up. I remember last season, I had these finishing bottom, mm -hmm. and uh, they've proved us both wrong on both occasions. Uh, Bournemouth, if they had a few more games to play then they could have probably pushed up into the top 10 then I had a bit of a clang at West Ham United hindered their success to some degree Moyes is going to be leaving as well well he has left now yeah. at the end of this the, the campaign so yeah five points five positions out there not great and then I had Burnley but I think a lot of content creators I think everyone was seduced into Vincent Company's style of play. Bought into and, the hype. Yeah, bought into the hype. A lot of people got this one wrong. 
I had them in 15th position, which was six positions above where they finished. So that puts me on 12 points for this season and the Spencer model, 24 points. Yeah, so with mine, as you can see, a big fat zero in all those predictions. Lots of fours and threes. Starting off Wolves, I thought they'd probably scrape it staying up probably towards the end of the season. At the end of the day, Lopetegui walked a few days before the start of the season because he wasn't back in yeah. the summer. In comes Gary O'Neill and does a pretty superb job considering the circumstances there, doesn't he? So, yeah, their end of the season yeah. was absolutely terrible. Just the one win in their last fix, six fixtures. That's when you're on the beach though, isn't it, at the end of the day? So that's three points there on the Spencer model. Then Bournemouth I had in 16th for four after last season. They did need that extra bit of quality and it was going to be transitioning to the Iriola day as well but after a really slow start they really did pick up towards the end of the season and now they're looking to play played some great football ended it poorly when they were on the beach and knew they were going to stay up but they're looking exciting into next year and then we have my joint worst prediction of the video Burnley four positions out which, which isn't that bad actually. it's not bad but that goes to show how predictable this season's mm, been in the Premier League hasn't it I didn't particularly buy into the Vincent Company hype just because style of play means nothing it did well in the championship but Premier League's a big different kettle of fish isn't it you can play possession football and just play around teams whereas in the Premier League you've got to be strong all over the pitch they got rid of their two assets in Nathan Teller and also Squats got time who got them up at the end of the day yeah just nowhere near enough for Burnley and I thought they were really poor in most of the season then we had Nottingham Forest I thought they were going to have a bang average season but I was three places out and only just stayed up points deduction of course still signing absolutely stupid loads of players with big names I was actually quite surprised that Steve Cooper got sacked, to be honest, and I don't know why I think Nuno will be gone there next season as well, to be honest, and they're going to be struggling again. Another clanger in 13th, Brentford. Obviously, Ivan Tony getting the ban. However, they just seemed to drop off a lot, didn't they? Picked up well towards the end of the season, but I, I don't know what's happened to Brentford. They're starting to tail off a bit now, aren't they? But anyway, moving on to the next section, 12th to 9th. Got a good seven points there, so some really good predictions. Palace, I was two out on. Roy Hodgson, I said he was going to leave at the end of the season. Actually left mid-season um, due to ill health as well. So they bring in Oliver Glasner, and look at the way that they finished the season. Crystal Palace rocketing straight up into 10 points. Mateta's fantastic. If they can keep all of Eze and Elise into next season... Yeah, Alize looks like he could be yeah. out the door with the rumours I've been seeing. Anyway. Probably for a lot of money as well. So I think Palace definitely a shout for Europe next year if they can keep this going. Then Fulham, two positions out. So I get another point there. Sort of another bang average season for Fulham. Good standard Premier League mid-table squad. So happy with that. Then West Ham, I was one position out. They actually finished in ninth, whereas they, or as I predicted them to finish in 10th. So that's three points. I did think with the extra European football in the Europa League and the bit of extra quality, I did think they'd struggle a little bit more. But Lopetegui coming in in the season, that's looking very exciting down there in East London. And then same sort of story I thought for Brighton as well. Two positions out, so that means they finish in ninth. Uh, De Zerbi is obviously left at the end of the season, so it'll be interesting who they get in now as well. No European football again next year, so they can have a good rebuilding season. So yeah, that takes me up to 16 points in our model. Spencer FC model, but me up to 27. Okay, so my 12th to 9th position, I had Fulham in 12th position, which was only the, the one position out, so a pretty decent effort for me there. Three points, of course. Uh, if they had lost that match at the end of the season, then they would have finished in 13th position, but uh, overall a decent yeah. uh, account themselves. They got the you know exciting players yeah. going forward, forward, like sort of Harry Wilson, Pereira, etc., then I had Crystal Palace in 11th position. They finished in 10th, so only the one position out there, which is another very, very good position from my point of view. Then I had Brentford, which was my joint worst prediction of the season. Brentford, of course, finished in 16th position. It's like when Ivan Tony came back, he was banging in the goals and then he sort of he was dropped. He was out of the yeah. side, wasn't he? He was starting on the he was on the bench. Okay, Wissa, etc. And, and Bueno were contributing amongst the goals, but they they weren't really getting amongst the wins. But saying that they did get three wins in their last six matches, mm -hmm. which probably helped them es escape relegation, you could say. And then I had another very poor prediction, which was Spurs in ninth position. Spurs of course finished in fifth, so zero points there so that puts me on 18 points in our model and the spencer fc model 36 points overall
Moving on to our eighth to fifth position. In eighth position, I had Brighton. They, of course, finished in 11th position. Sort of dropped off. They did have a lot of injuries. Oh, yeah. Deserve be out of the door as well. So, be interesting to see where they finish next season. But those injuries really hampered them. No European competitions for them next season. But overall, a solid mid table finish mm -hmm. i was three positions out and zero points then i had chelsea in seventh position just the one position out really pleased with this prediction i get three points for my efforts then but pochettino being shown the door obviously i know it says by mutual consent and all that but he's been kicked out of there yeah they had a, an absolutely fantastic end of the season with five wins on the bounce mm -hmm. so you know the hierarchy there at Stamford Bridge, I'm not sure what they're after. Who are they going to bring in? Yeah, Remains to be seen. Maybe Allegri. Who knows? Oh, I'd like to see we'll him pass yeah. the top bowling. We, we will see over the uh, the course of the summer. Then I had Aston Villa in sixth position. Just the two positions out. Villa finishing in the Champions League position. So an excellent season overall for Villa. So I get a point there. And then... Slightly disappointing. I had Liverpool in fifth position. Only two positions out. I do get a point for that. But really in Klopp's final season. I think yeah. he only announced it around about November time. Yeah, though, January, didn't he? February. January, yeah, halfway through the season anyway. So they finished third overall. Seven points behind Arsenal at the end of the campaign. And I get a point for that one. So overall now I am on 23 points in our model. 44 points in the Spencer model. So here in this section, I had another pretty good round, picked up another five points here. So in eighth position, I had Spurs. I thought it was going to be a bit of a rebuilding season. Poster Coglu comes in with his new ideas. I was really impressed with. They played uh, well. They played some times. really good football in some patches of the season. Just but other defensively, times, defensively they were abysmal. The way that Andrew's called Tottenham out as well from getting away from their Tottenham ways, isn't it? It's fantastic. And they're going to push up the league next year provisional to sign-ins. Chelsea, I thought it would be a little bit better than last year, but still exposing the problems. I thought I was going to have a bit of a stinker with this one because of the way they started this season. Oh, I thought yeah. they'd be finishing about 12th to 14th. But Cole Palmer absolutely ran yeah. the show. What a signing he was this season. Probably the signing of the season, I think. Probably possibly the player of the season as well. Although you yeah. can say a lot of those Manchester City, like Foden, oh, etc. Harlan. But Palmer was brilliant. He absolutely was. But at the end of the day as well with Chelsea... Pochettino going out the door considering the really good run at the end goes to show that Chelsea owners really don't like working with any managers. Either Potter goes, Pochettino goes, Tuchel goes. That's not good there, is it, at all? So who are they going to be able to attract? Who's going to want to work with them? Then I had Villa two positions out. They actually finished in the Champions League. I thought they'd build on and have a really good season from last year. But I did think that maybe the Conference League would hinder them a bit and they'd win it. Completely wrong on that. Absolutely fantastic all season. Unai Emery bringing in some great players. Ended poorly, but Champions League football next year, so that's pretty fantastic, isn't it? Then I had a stinker with Manchester United. Three positions out. Eric Ten Hag has absolutely exposed them, like Rolf Ragnick did. At the end of the day, it's the egos in the dressing room that are killing that club, so the only way they can fix it, in my opinion... Sell a lot of them and just start again. If you're a Man United fan. Let us know, Man United fans. But yeah, the amount of problems you've got at that club is absolutely ridiculous. So picking up a nice few points there. So four points on a 20 points and up to 36. And then moving on to my top four. Look at that. 5, 10, 15. Got the top three exactly bob on. Minus Newcastle, who obviously had a bit of a dip away from last season. Poor Champions League campaign, but mm. they were in the group of death. Plagued by injuries. Lewis Hall looked great as one of the youngsters who really filled in for the injuries there. And Tonelli as well. Tonelli getting his ban as well. He's, I think he's got another two-month suspended ban on top of that as well, which is quite poor. But yeah, I think Newcastle, with the odd signing, they should be back around there. And if they keep their players fit. But Liverpool finishing in third. I just didn't think they are in a bit of a rebuilding season with that midfield. So I just didn't think they were ready. And like Arsenal and Manchester City. Klopp's leaving at the end of the season now. And in comes Arne Slot. Um, from Feyenoord to obviously that's going to be another rebuild included in the midfield so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on next season well maybe if if they don't sack him Ten Hag versus Slot isn't it um, Ajax versus Feyenoord in the Premier League that's going to be interesting 
then Arsenal just didn't think they'd have enough quality aside from Man City who absolutely steamrolled it the second half of the season as well, they Arsenal always do Arsenal did win their last six matches you've got to give it to them both now. of them did to be fair like they were absolutely fantastic both sides towards the end of the season 28 wins apiece close as anything but quality toll with Man City at the end of the day and it'll be interesting to see if the same happens again next year so ending that got 35 points on our model which is a very good season and also on the Spencer FC model I had 39 points which is absolutely fantastic but show goes to show how predictable it was it was year. a very predictable season wasn't it oh yeah and for my top four I had Arsenal surprisingly in fourth position mm -hmm. I thought they'd drop off a little bit from last year with Champions League yeah. etc so I was two positions out so just a point there then I had Newcastle a bit of a stinker that one four positions out as we have you mm -hmm. said the injuries Tonali with his ban etc and they've, they've got this sort of restriction on their spending as well mm -hmm. haven't you got to be a very very careful there the Magpies then I had another absolute stinker six positions out Manchester United mm -hmm. what was I thinking of Ten high. I thought that the likes of Hoiberg coming in, Sancho in the side, Anthony, all the, the quality of these players, likes of Casemiro, etc. It, it just didn't work out for them, and they finished in what was it eighth position? Yeah. I had a real stinker there, and finally worst league finish in Premier League era, I believe, as well. Is it? <laughs> wow. And then of course I had Manchester City as champions. A lot of people either had these yeah. Arsenal or Liverpool in that top spot. So I had another six points added to my total. So overall, I had 29 points for this season in our model, 56 points in the Spencer FC model, which isn't great when you compare them against other content creators. But it is an improvement on last yeah. season because last season, Nathan, you came away with 20 point, 21 points. Mm -hmm. And this season you've improved, which is 35 points. And myself, I had an absolute terrible season last season. I think a lot of people did on 17 points. But this season, I finished on 29 yeah, points. Yeah, last season, so, Leicester crucified everyone, didn't they? They did. So pers from a personal point of view, we did really well. Personal improvements on last season. And as yep. long as we continue that in the coming seasons, then you've got to be happy with that. Mm -hmm. So just a quick recap. 39 and 35 for you and 56 and 29 mm -hmm for myself so that's the end of the season how do you think the premier league overall that went nathan uh yeah it was a decent very season very very predictable congratulations of yes. course to manchester city three promoter clubs minus luton absolutely shocking hopefully well we've obviously got leicester coming up ipswich yeah. town for the first time in 20 It'll years be good to see 22 them. years as well that's going to be fantastic and they've got a re well do first double promoters in southampton and norwich isn't it and then you've got leeds united and Southampton Can't in the playoffs. Two more dislikable clubs to come up. <gasps> oh, though, isn't it? I know. Thanks for joining us once again throughout this Premier League campaign. Your results over on the Super yep. Brew website. So that's it for pretty much another season. We'll probably produce some more videos over the summer. I might do some comparative videos with, or obviously, Super mm. Brew and Fantasy Football. Maybe something on the Euros as well. Maybe. Yeah, oh, yeah. Euro, mm -hmm. Euros are coming as well in Germany. So watch out for those videos. Yeah, shame we couldn't be there. Thank you, Rob Page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't mind Page, actually. But thanks for man, joining man. us once again. Enjoy the summer. And we'll see you all in the next video.